In this review, we discuss the structure and function of glycans and specifically their use as receptors for viruses in attachment and entry to cells. Um, as you know, glycans cover many cell surfaces and they can be linked to either lipids or proteins at the cell surface. Glycans are very diverse and they are very complicated structures and it makes it challenging. I think that they are difficult to synthesize often. They cannot be sequenced, they cannot be cloned. And it's often difficult to know even what glycans are on what cells and what the distribution and the density of these glycans on cell surfaces is. Uh, when a virus binds to a cell surface, it often encounters uh, first a glycan receptor. And as a result, many viruses uh, bind glycans. So when Luisa Stroy and, my, and I surveyed the literature, we found actually an, an astounding number of viruses uh, that use glycans as receptors. And we listed them in a long table and this was really impressive, but we thought it would be maybe uh, better to focus on a few specific viruses and explain in detail how they interact with, virus, uh, with the glycans and not really discuss each of these in, in, at great length. So we focus our review on four re uh, viruses that are relevant for humans, uh, polyoma viruses, rheoviruses, coronaviruses and rotaviruses, all of them bind glycans. And all of these uh, have seen in recent, in recent years some papers, uh, glycan receptor structures have been uh, found to be really important for understanding how the virus binds to cells and also how the virus really can switch from one cell surface to another cell surface. So the topic of this review is really discussing uh, these four viruses and how they use uh, specific glycan receptors and how they can switch from one receptor to another receptor uh, at the cell surface. So if you work on, in virology, if you work on a virus, chances are uh, your virus will bind a, a glycan receptor at some point during its life cycle. And so I think you should care about uh, how this virus binds this glycan. Very often also glycans are found to, to switch uh, from one receptor to another uh, by having very subtle mutations in the binding site, uh, by really engaging a different glycan structure. Often that's not known exactly how this works. Uh, and so I think this is also relevant for many purposes. In terms of uh, Therapy, drug design, I think it's, it's important to understand how glycans bind to viruses as one can maybe then design mimics that block the virus from binding to the cell or even multivalent uh, compounds that block different binding sites at the same time. And finally, if you think about retargeting a virus from one cell to another cell or even maybe from a different host to another host, uh, if you know how the virus binds a certain cell, one can retarget this virus, redesign its envelope, maybe its, its, its uh, shield to bind to another uh, surface structure with different glycans that are maybe even more useful for maybe gene therapy purposes, for example. So specifically, we want to have this review uh, out there also for young scientists, for young investigators who are looking at uh, a career in science and who are still looking and searching for maybe an interesting topic, interesting field to work on. And I think glycan virus interactions are really uh, interesting, uh, it's an interesting subject that also has a lot of potential for the future. And one of the reasons we wrote this review is really to engage and excite uh, young scientists into this new, uh, into this interesting research area.